In this segment, we will cover how to create pop-out decals. This is where the cutter contours around a design, but will cut completely through the vinyl and the backing, leaving little tags along the way so the decals stay in place as they are being cut out. If you are unfamiliar with the print and cut process, we suggest that you review the video segment Print and Cut Basics. Also, you should have a good working knowledge of Adobe Illustrator and or Corel Draw. Here is a design where we have already created two cut lines. The inside line or path will be used for cutting only through the vinyl or kiss cutting, whereas the outside line or path will be used for cutting completely through the backing or die cutting. In order to make this work, we will have to create a layer for each cut line and place the cut lines on their own layers. So in the layers palette, let's name layer one to print. This will be where everything that is to be printed will be placed, this usually being the design. Next, we'll create two extra layers for our cut lines. Rename the outside line Die Cut and the inside line Kiss Cut. Now we can just place each cut line to its respective layer. This is done by dragging the dot representing the die cut line to the die cut layer and do the same with the dot representing the kiss cut line and dragging it to the kiss cut layer. Just to check, we can enable and disable different layers to make sure that each object is placed on the right layer. The next step is to create the registration marks. This is done by clicking on the file pull-down menu, hovering over Cutting Master 4, and selecting registration marks. Let's keep the settings as they are and click OK. This design is ready to print, but first let's disable both cut lines so that they won't be sent to the printer as part of the design. Now the design can be sent to the printer. We have already set Condition 2's force value light enough to kiss cut, and Condition 3's force value to cut completely through the backing. There are only a couple of other settings that we need to adjust within Condition 3. Whenever you plan to cut through the material, the blade holder has to be placed in the front tool holder so that it is positioned over the channel in front of the Teflon strip. This position is considered tool holder 3. The back slot is considered tool holder 1. We have to assign condition 3 so that it uses tool holder 3. This setting lets the cutter know that if a cut job requires that tool, it will pause and allow us to shift the tool to the front position. The second setting we need to configure is to assign a cut line perforating pattern. This will cause the cut tool to perforate as it cuts, leaving little tags along the cut which will hold decal or decals in place as they are being cut. Let's first assign condition 3 to tool holder 3. This is done by pressing the condition test key, the down arrow key twice to get to the page of options with the assign tool menu option and then pressing the 2 key for Assign Tool. As you can see, Condition 3 is currently assigned to Tool 1. By pressing the 3 key, we can assign it to the Tool 3, which is the front position, and then press Enter. Next is to make sure a cut line pattern is assigned to Condition 3. Once again, this ensures the cut line perforates as it cuts so that the decals stay in place while cutting. This setting is on the next page of options, so let's press the up arrow key, then the 3 key for cut line pattern, and then press the 2 key for type. We will be using pattern 5. Through testing, we have found that number 5 works well with our media, so press the up arrow key to set it at 5. Pressing the escape button will return to the previous menu. Press enter to accept the value. Finally, press the condition test key to exit. The two conditions are set to both kiss cut and die cut. Let's return to Adobe Illustrator, turn the cut layers back on, and then open Cutting Master 4 cut plot window. Next, let's click on the layer palette. Here is where we can assign conditions to individual layers. We want to cut the kiss cut layer first, so we can keep the kiss cut layer at top, and then followed by the die cut layer. Next is to assign a condition number to each cut line or layer. To do this, 
we have to click on the checkbox near the Enable Driver Options below. This will open up the settings below where we can assign conditions to each layer. First, we'll select the Kiss Cut layer, which is done, and then assign the condition 2 to that layer. This is done clicking on this pull-down list of conditions, and then selecting CE7000 number 2 plotter condition, since this is the condition we set up earlier for the kiss cutting. Next, we can select the die cut layer, and assign the CE7000 number 3 plotter condition to it. Finally, we can go ahead and disable the print layer. We are all set, so we can send this job to the cutter, but this time we will send the job to a USB thumb drive. We can do this by clicking Save to File. Let's plug the thumb drive into the secondary USB port, and then use the arrow keys to move the tool head over the first registration mark. Next, start the process by pressing the pause menu key, then press the right arrow key. Next is to select the file by pressing the 2 key, selecting the file. Once that is done, pressing enter will have the cutter scan for the registration marks first, then cut the kiss cut line. When it is finished with the kiss cut line, it will stop the cutter, at which point it will have us switch the blade holder from the back slot to the front slot. Once the tool has been placed in the front slot, press enter on the control panel. It will then proceed to cut the die cut line. As it cuts through, you'll notice that since condition 3 has the cut line pattern enabled, it perforates as it cuts. Once the cut is done, we can pop out the decal, and then remove the outline of the kiss cut. And here is the result.